Does anyone know what Isaiah chapter 41 verses 14 says? Anyone? Okay. So it says, Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Amen? Amen. I'm just going to read it again. Because the first time I read this verse, I thought I read wrong. Because it says, Fear not, you worm Jacob. So are we worms? No. But God is so great that when He looks at us, there is no need for Him to take care of us the way He did. There is no need for Him to be there for us in every step of the way. There is no need for Him to wait for us to come back to the Lord. But why does He do it? Even when we are so little, when we rebel against Him, why is He so patient? That speaks volumes about His nature. And me as a rebellious teenager, I always thought, you know, I could have it my way. I always thought God's plan is going to be way lesser than my plan. That was my pride. So every time someone said, Sarah, you got to listen to the Bible. Sarah, you got to do what is in accordance with God's plan. I told myself, you know what? Forget that. Am I going to be free if I do that? Am I going to have fun? Those were the thoughts that came into my head the first time when I heard those things. And it was not easy for me to really, you know, take the word of the Lord and put it into practice. Because, you know, we all are like around the same age group and we know how friends will judge. We know how things are, you know. When you step out into the world, you know, if you don't listen to a few songs that are satanic, if you don't listen or if you don't do certain things, you're not cool. And we're all in the same struggle here. And here I was in this battle. Do I, do I glorify myself? Do I listen to myself? You know, do I listen to my pride? Do I listen to my ego and just shut God out of my life? Do what I want to do. Or do I listen to God? And I actually pursued it. I actually tried to do what I wanted to do. And I failed miserably. There was no peace. There's this verse that says, there is no rest for the wicked. You know, I'll tell you, I come here, I sing. But your personal faith, the faith that you have in the room when you go and pray in, in front of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is what matters. When you close your eyes and look unto the heavens, when you look unto Jesus Christ, is he someone that is distant? You know, is he someone that only exists in a storybook, that exists in a picture, that exists in a crucifix? Or does he exist in your heart? Does he exist in every conversation that you make? Does he exist in the life choices that you make? That was the question I had to ask myself. And I had a tough battle. I failed miserably. I tried everything I could. I rebelled in so many ways. But I never had the peace. My mind was constantly worrying. My mind was constantly worried. And I was just so lost. I was so lost. At one point, I even asked God, God, are you there? God, are you there? Are you listening to me right now? But I did not fail. I failed to realize that he was right there in the midst of, his, of it all. He was waiting for me. And the only thing that I would like to tell all of you is more than friends, more than money, more than name, more than a career, more than good looks, Jesus matters more. There's a kind of faith, there's a kind of peace that comes from the Lord that nothing in this world can give. You might have it all, you know, you might, you might be the best at everything. You might have everything that this world could desire. But still, none of that comes close to what Jesus can give you. So as we sing the song, Graves in the Gardens, every single lyric, every word of it just talks about that. As couldn't fail me No time to praise The treasures of faith Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together Every desire Is now 
Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We love you and praise you, Jesus. 